Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is the awesome Indoraptor back with another reaction video, but today we are going to be doing something completely different. I am still going to continue on with the SCP reactions, but today I wanted to bring back an old favorite of mine. It's been years since I've seen this show, and I want to send a special thank you to, to people such as the Fun Times, as you see in the bottom of the screen there, for keeping this show alive. It is called Lost Tapes. These reveal around encounters with cryptic creatures all from around the world and supposed encounters that these people actually had. And today we're going over Lost Tapes, Season 1, Episode 6, Devil Dragon. And without further ado, let us get right on into it. One of the things of living with cats, you get cat hair in your nose. Brandon on, I would like to see you refresh my memory. That tells you is in sense that they have to bring up the same quote twice. The Megalania is the largest lizard ever to be recorded. The tracks found by the teenagers were consistent with a reptile 30 feet long, far bigger than even the Komodo dragon. I believe there are things that science can't prove, but that don't mean it don't exist. I've always been dying to go to Australia since I was a kid. In 2007, Dang. Tim Akron, an avid outdoorsman, set out to shoot the pilot episode of an extreme survival series. The premise of the show was to be dropped in remote locations, stranded for seven days, and buried. Okay, I could tell already that this guy is like a survivalist Bear Girls wannabe. You have many survivalists that claim they know what they're doing, but in reality, they got like a camera crew that in turn will feed them steaks behind the scenes, feed them pizza, they sleep in a shelter, whereas they claim on the show that they're sleeping in a tent. The only one who doesn't ever do that is that guy off the show Survivor Man. It's just him and his camera. That's it. No crew, no nothing. Yeah, frustrates me. Various harsh wilderness environments with no food, no crew, and no contact with the outside world. All right, so no crew. Though this skilled be in outdoor survival techniques, Tim could not have anticipated the challenge that would confront him in the Australian rainforest. These are his tapes. Hey everyone and welcome to Stranded. I'm here in the Australian Outback. No, you're not, Tim. Hey everyone, welcome to Stranded. I'm here in the Australian Rainforest. Over the next week, I'm going to be sharing this environment with some of the most dangerous animals, plants, reptiles, and downright scary creatures you will ever see. You can tell he's a freshman. Cat snake, if I'm not mistaken. 
salty or freshy. Keyword undocumented. Oh man. It's unbelievable. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. And that's also why I'm only gonna take what I need for my shelter tonight. What I need is a couple things. One, I need something to get me off the ground so we keep the venomous snakes and creepy crawlers away from me. Secondly, I need something to keep the rain off me. This stuff looks like it'll work just fine. You can smell it. The rain's coming. If I'm not mistaken, they know it as the hooey. surprise me. Oh, man. Okay, I'm just getting the final touches put on my shelter. It's crude, but it should work. At least a little bit to keep the, uh, some of the rain off me tonight. You're still on the ground, buddy. I can only say I'm in the rainforest. And it is hot. And it is really humid. And I'm starting to feel that it's been a while since I've had some food in my belly, so I'm gonna just get the final part of the shelter done. And then I'm gonna go out and start looking for some food before the sun goes down. Now Komodo Dragon is a very aggressive predator. It can get up to 10, 15 feet long. Stranded on a remote island, forced to fight off the man-eating Komodo dragon. One of the dragons apparently saw the divers at lunch. Dang! And I've seen Komodo dragons in the zoo when they're huge. Alright, so check this out. I'm out looking for food. And I come across these bones. On first inspection, I thought they might be animal bones, but they're definitely human. We know there are a lot of predators out here. Saltwater croc, for one, is huge. It may be a feral pig. Maybe a feral pig. How's that? All right, I'm going to do that again. And one more time. Alright, so check this out. Looks like one of our jungle friends. Watch my camera over. Alright, I'm gonna reset and do that again. Remember, one of the things that Aborigines used to do is they would look for fallen tree bark, tree stumps. And underneath that tree bark is where witchetty grubs hang out, and that's what I'm looking for right now. Witchetty grubs. So what I'm gonna do. I wonder if she can smell something soft here and see what we can do. Excuse the cheesy humor. And hopefully, we found the jackpot. So basically, I'm going to take one of these guys here. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to confess. I would not be against trying these. I've eaten ants. I've tried scorpions, and I love crickets. But grubs. I might have to get past first before I even think about trying it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that right now. It's cute. I don't know. Let's give it a shot. Oh, the crunch! It's like a potato chip. Yeah, it was kind of juicy. It's kind of like uh, tastes like chicken and almonds. So we got a nice little dinner here. There's a good source of protein in these guys right here.
comes back out and it's stuck in the sand. This is why, unless the guy's had years of experience and I see his records being a survivalist, I don't want to listen to his advice. You stick your hand into a hole, especially in a place like Australia, or even here in the U.S. and Florida, you do not know what's going to be down in that hole. Some places they have giant spiders. Midwest of the U.S. they have... Yeah, yeah, it might be a gopher tortoise, but norms, mostly they share tunnels of rattlesnakes. And here, you stick your hand even in a tunnel in the water, there could be a gator, a snapper turtle, or a nest of cottonmouth. You don't stick your hand in the hole unless you see sign of what it could be. And even then, don't use a tiny little toothpick. Use a huge stick. There, Idiots. See? Idiot! Idiot! I told you! You'll get bit! Mm. Yeah, no joke. And they Our have venom as well. ...to not kill their prey with their first bite. They have a cocktail of potent bacteria in their mouth, which infects the surface of the wound and causes its prey to eventually die if they don't get eaten right away. <laughs> Yeah, and it's an anticoagulant, meaning you're gonna bleed to death, so he's gonna bleed. Definitely bit me. I'm gonna, uh. I'm gonna go take care of this. Welcome to the rainforest. That's when you stop. And go find help. Stop the show. A continue it at a different time. It disappeared when the dinosaurs did. And then in 1938, oh, see, suddenly this one was crawled up in South Africa. And it was just like finding a dinosaur uh, out in the forest someplace. I think it certainly opens the possibility of all types of monsters that might someday pop up. Oh, oh, oh. <sighs> Having tended to his wound. Tim attempted to keep himself dry and warm for the night ahead. The importance of a fire. It's tantamount. about. Not only will the smoke and the flame I'll keep away. The venom's getting to him, I can tell already. Either that or the it's humidity. I d I don't know. Right now I'm so told somebody of where he was going at least. Maybe they did and I missed it. I don't know. Even though the clarity is not that clear, I could see that that area is infected.
which means I need to need to get to a village. I think I remember this one about five miles north of here. Which I'm gonna try to get to. Ooh. I'm gonna grab my stuff on my camera and get the hell out of here. Sometimes you just gotta forget the camera, just go. He's got sepsis. I don't know if like what the Cloud of Dragon can cause. Go, oh, go. Civilization, it became increasingly clear that he was being stalked. We gotta find that village. Oh, Infection's getting worse. She's humid. Oh. I remember if uh, Komodo tries to go for the lakes, the tendons, anything with major blood vessels to get it, the venom going faster. With the poison coursing through his body, Tim became increasingly weary and disoriented. Three if you have to. I don't know if you will be able to though. Sometimes you just gotta think things through. Don't stick your hand in a hole. Stop, just go. This is the thing with like horror movies. The victim stops, killer catches up to them. Oh 
Just so you know, this is not my screen blurring like this. I think it's his camera. Hey, Catherine. Oh, his <laughs> wife or girlfriend. Not how I expected it. Oh, his eyes. You tell Maria that I love her. Maybe his daughter. Maybe the first person was his sister. I, I, I honestly don't know. I love you both. body was never found. However, his camera equipment was recovered by Aboriginal trail guides less than a quarter mile from their village. Oh, DNA testing there. the saliva found on his equipment matched no known reptile species. And so we are left to wonder, do they live among us? Whee. I love the guys from Lost Tapes, I'm telling you, but it goes to show there could be living species that were supposed to have been extinct, maybe from the Ice Age, the Triassic, the Ordovician, the Precambrian era. Maybe there's passenger pigeons still left, but either way, could there still be living fossils like that coelacanth we've seen earlier in the video? That's something to think about, because if there is, who knows what else is out there? And right now, with the way of how we're treating the planet, I don't know, maybe we could be pushing them back into extinction if they weren't extinct already. It'll be something to think about. And anyways, thank you all for joining. Feel free to click on either one of these videos that you see here on the screen, and hopefully we'll have the chance to be seeing you again on the channel. This is the Awesome Endoraptor, signing out.